Rossoneri, this is AC Milan Talk. We are ready for a new weekly episode uh, with the uh, going on of our favorite team, both uh, on and off the pitch, but not alone. Here with me, Adriano Del Monte. Hi, Adriano. Ciao, Licia. Wonderful to be back. Ciao, Tifosi. Looking forward to the program. And welcome also to Sheridan Bird. Hi, Licia. Hi, Hi, Adriano. I can't wait to get stuck into today's episode. I miss you a lot, guys, uh, during this uh, international break, and we're missing uh, uh, the AC Milan out on the pitch. It was tough without Milan, without league football, but there were some nice results, some interesting results in the international scene, and I missed both of you too. I'm very thrilled that we're reunited. The love is all there. I miss you both as well, but we're back, <laughs> and now this is uh, one of the most important parts of the season coming up. We know we've got Champions League next week, a big match in Serie A this weekend, Leicester, so plenty to get stuck into. Of course, so we have a lot to talk about. Let's start with our men's first team. Our Rossoneri are back at uh, Milanello, sitting at top of the table, and now Pioli's side need to remain there. Adriano. They do, and what a way to get back into the league action, of course. Um, success before the break, but now this is when it starts to get very serious because, of course, looking good in terms of the standings, in terms of where the club are currently at, but Juventus to come at the weekend. Sheridan, always a famous clash to two biggest clubs in Italy, arguably, and it's going to be a very special, special weekend because you come in now with Champions League, with other big matches to come in Serie A, with um, squads coming in off the back of, of course, an international break, and you can see clearly the, the standout fixture in Serie A this weekend, Sunday night here in this city of Milan. And look, I think uh, another big, big night for this famous club on the cards. Yeah, I, I agree, and you look at it there, it's a, it's a fixture that stands out. It's an international fixture. People from all over the world, I dare say, will be tuning in to watch Milan Juventus. It's always special when the two come head to head. Uh, often there are fireworks, there are spectacular moments, and um, it's the beginning of a very important uh, block of matches for Milan. There is Ficayo Tomori scoring against Juventus not so long ago, last season. Very quick reflexes from the English defender with the skill of a midfielder or an attacker. But uh, yeah, it's a game to look forward to. This is Brahim Diaz with an outrageous goal. Sheridan, this is thrilling. I was right behind this goal, sitting on the pitch right there, and the celebration was one of the more iconic moments here. I was two metres from that celebration when Leal lifted uh, Brahim Diaz aloft there. It was a special time, a special result. And these are the matches where the memories remain. And of course, another opportunity for, of course, a new look Milan team with some new faces playing for the first time in this historic fixture. Another opportunity to rewrite some history this Sunday. We saw the goal uh, scored by Brahim Diaz, but I know that you chose for us uh, uh, another three. We did. Three goals scored we in the given, history. We were given some homework to yes. choose our yeah. favourite goals between Milan <laughs> and the event for Milan, naturally. And uh, we thought we'd come up with, uh, we think we'd come up with some really, uh, some pearls, some fantastic goals. We've gone a little bit the same, but there are a few differences. It's very hard because there's been so many iconic goals. Mm. But from what we have recalled, literally, we've done our best and we have our three favourite memories, I guess, from this fixture in recent years. So let's start uh, from the third place, Sheridan, let's start with you. Yeah, the third place, well, we actually saw it a couple of seconds ago, but it was a, a really memorable goal. This is Brahim Diaz stealing mm -hmm. the ball on the halfway line. He's got three defenders to beat, and he's got a fine goalkeeper in Wojciech Stenchny to beat, but he didn't panic, he did the business then took his shirt off just to remind the fans his name. I don't think they needed reminding, but look at this, alertness. I think Bonucci was on a yellow card, so Bonucci could not engage. And uh, Diaz, he didn't panic, and it was a, a finish. The keeper got a hand to it, obviously, but it was still a really good finish. And it was the kind of goal that, as Adriano says, that he'll remember for a long time. Milan fans will remember it for a long time. And uh, it was just a really good uh, blink of an eye goal, really good finish, really good uh, spectacular effort. Your third goal and the third place, Adriano? My third place goes back seven years ago, mm -hmm. 2016. And it's, uh, well, now a player on the opposing team, but Manuel Locatelli with this fine strike here. It was a first win for Milan in this fixture for about four years. So 
In this period, Juventus did have, have uh, Milan's number, but Locatelli there in his very, very early days scoring uh, an iconic goal. It was a rare year where I was back in Australia, actually, so I remember that very well, watching it 4 a.m. in the morning, but a special goal from a young player. Second place of uh, your uh, top three, Sheridan. It is. It's a bit of Samba magic, Ligia Adriano. <laughs> it's uh, Ronaldinho, or Ronaldine, as I believe they say there. Mm -hmm. uh, Look at that, he makes it look so easy, but that is not easy. Nor is the dance easy, by the way. I think Adriano could maybe dance like that. I think you'll have me covered there, Sheridan, yeah, with that yeah, dance. No. But I've actually gone the same second, so we're, we're the same here. Because Adriano, that's yeah. the... you selected the same goal because it looks simple, but it wasn't. He and passed it into the corner. We don't pick favourites here, but <laughs> Ronaldinho in a Milan shirt is always a special memory for me. I, I just love the way that he went about his business as a player. Fantastic to watch and a goal like that special. And, and remember, Ligia Adriano, uh, the way that he played with a smile is replicated by Rafa Leao in the current squad. Many people have said that there's, a, there's an element of the joy mm. of uh, playing when uh, Rafa Leao plays, the grin, the smile, that uh, Ronaldinho had, and that's a wonderful thing. Hard not to love, but that's our second, both of us. Oh, well, <laughs> now the best one uh, in the history of the games against Bianconeri, Adriano. I would like to start with you this time. Okay. <laughs> you can start with me. Okay. Well, my number one, it perhaps isn't the best goal that Milan have ever scored against Juventus, but I think uh, a moment that needs no explanation. Twenty years ago, Andriy Shevchenko, the decisive penalty, Old Trafford, nil-nil at finish after 120 minutes. Scores a decisive penalty, Milan go on to win another Champions League show. What I love about that is the focus, because at the beginning, you, you notice he looks at the referee so many times because he's focused. Sorry to cut you off there, but did you see how far Buffon was off his line? That would not be tolerated in a, this a, day. It was a different time, Adriano. Scored. It was a different time. You're right, the referee. But you are right. Look, that's, a, that's an iconic moment, and I think, uh, obviously, there have been better goals, but for, for that moment, that's right up there with the very best. Yeah, and it was a return to Champions League glory after a nine-year gap for Milan. So, Sheva, Sheva is Sheva. Sheva is Sheva. You know it very well. Uh, so, Sheridan, you are... agree with uh, Adriano for the same goal scored by Shevchenko or different goal scored? I chose a different goal. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it was against the same goalkeeper. This is Andrei Shevchenko, I believe it was autumn of 2001. Now, if you haven't seen this goal before, what do you think Shev's going to do? Score. That's what he's going to do. <laughs> From outside the area, against one of the best goalkeepers of all time, Gianluigi Buffon, against an iron-clad defence. He's not even in the area. Some people said it was a cross. I don't think it was a cross, because I, I trust Andrei Shevchenko. I think he was going for that. And uh, it's just a joy to watch. I was in... Italy at the time, because I'm a bit older than you guys, I don't mind admitting, the viewers might have noticed. I was living in Italy at the time, we were watching it in a uh, bar, and no one could believe it, because it was just, you don't do that kind of thing against Buffon, against Juventus, unless you've got the skill of Sheva. So, a good uh, digress about the match uh, against Bianconeri, but now on Sunday night uh, in San Siro. Our Rossoneri are going into a very busy period uh, with uh, 12 games. Uh, we know very well the one against uh, Allegri side. What should we expect from uh, the match uh, against Bianconeri now? <laughs> So important. This is uh, well, what to expect is this is as big as it mm -hmm. gets, and each and every match to come needs to be absolutely respected. I don't really feel that there is the opportunity to to tweak what's happening. Mr. Pioli needs to obviously go with his strongest team because three points in matches like this is super important. We know that Juventus have made a very solid start in their own right this season. They must be respected. Both teams, I will be without some players. We know the Juventus have a couple of injury concerns. Milan with a couple of key players suspended in Mike Magnan and Teo Hernandez. And this battle between the two managers, Allegri and Pioli, it, season defining fixtures, it is still early in the campaign, but I think pressure across the board, and this is where the cream really need to rise to the top, and then who will deliver? Yeah, I think. Juventus are focusing a lot on the domestic title, the Scudetto this year, and they want to win it back. Uh, it's been a while since they've won it, and they'll be aware of that. Mm. So they're always tough to play against Allegri or Mr. Allegri. Fondly remembered here at Milan, won mm. the title in 2011. He's a fine tactician. So it will be a tough match, and they've got something to prove, and uh, it won't be an easy occasion. 
and they've got quality players, even if they're struggling somewhat, but they're always dangerous. Uh, the European, the lack of European football for Juventus is, is interesting because we are still in the early stages of the season, but as we get into the second half of the season and Juventus, one of the bigger clubs that don't have European involvement, that could start to play in their favour. So I really feel three points for Milan in this home fixture all the more important because you know, hopefully for Milan's sake going deep into European competition again this season but it's a it's an interesting time for Juventus nevertheless this is as important as it gets for Milan this weekend of course now I would like to step uh, take a step back with you on what happened uh, more than one week ago uh, in the game away game against Genoa at the mm. Ferraris because I know that we have also a little souvenir yes well, let's get to that because <laughs> that Sharon, winning night. when we arrived this morning, we mm. noticed that there was something different about this studio. <laughs> something so, special. We don't move around too much in this no. program. However, for those that haven't seen it, of course, mm. this is the... What have you got there, Adriano Del Monte? This is the beautiful <laughs> Milan goalkeeper Love shirt. It. But there's something unusual about it. But this one is all the more special with... Wow. Nine. A limited this, edition. This is one of my favourite things to see personally in football. When a player goes in goal, yeah. it's always special. But the fact that Giroud actually had, a, had an impact and mm -hmm. ultimately was the difference. He was. Is incredible. And uh, yeah, these are, these are selling very fast. They I are heard. for sale, aren't they? So anyone at home who's interested in having an Olivier Giroud goalkeeper shirt, you can have your own version, it's fantastic. If we go well by the end of the show, perhaps we can get Sheridan in the shirt. That would be very... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Green's not my colour, because I've got blue eyes, Leecher. I'm sure you noticed, so <laughs> green and blue doesn't go together so well. It's a well. cold colour, so it could green be... And, green and blue, we're fashion experts here at Milan mm. TV, because we work in, in, in We are a fashion Milan. club, but look at these scenes. It's. It's very, very special always, and again, he had the impact. He sharing. did something, yeah. He wasn't just there to stand there and look scary, look menacing. This is the impact he made, rushing off his line now, and that's bravery. You know, goalkeepers are used to getting smashed, getting hit by centre forwards, and they're larger. Goalkeepers are larger. Mike Mignon is a huge man. Olivier Giroud's not a small man, but he's not got the musculature mm. of Mike Mignon. And look at the courage, and second time, and, uh, and Milan got the victory. But then he got some beatings from his teammates as well. And it, certainly so, risking it all. That, yeah, he could have got, got hit, he could have, uh, there could have been an impact there. That takes real courage, and I, I think uh, the fans absolutely adored it, really loved it. Reading into it a little more, again, it's that willingness, that desire, that hunger to play for the shirt. Giroud, Again, of course, he's going to give it his all, but really putting his body on the line there. You can always tell what Mr Pioli has always done well with his squad here is ensure that they are united. We've already seen it with the new players coming in again. And Giroud, look at that. Wonderful celebrations at the end. So happy. And he won't be in goal this weekend, Licha. He won't. Neither will Manyan. But mm -hmm. uh, if he's required ever again, at least we know that he's more than capable. Yeah. A nice experiment for AC Milan, uh, who never stops fighting, and we can say this uh, very clearly way. Now, I would like to uh, take a photo after this episode with, with this shirt. Yes. Of course. With, with Sheridan wearing, wearing, it. wearing it. No. Sheridan uh, wore, yes. wearing the shirt. We will see. Miracles happen. <laughs> <laughs> Now, um, very important stats uh, relating to Stefano Pioli, who has uh, the highest uh, point per game average in Serie A of any AC Milan coach in the history of the Rossoneri. Very important these stats. Now we are looking at... Amazing. Uh, As you can see, 198 matches with Milan this weekend will be 199. PSG yeah. match will be 200. 1.92 average points per game, Sheridan. That is... That is a seriously high amount. Yeah, it's a sign of someone who has, uh, in his time here, has won the Scudetto. His other achievements are on the other side. Second place in his uh, in 2020-21. Return to the Champions League. Scudetto in the second season. Third season to the last four of the uh, Champions League. So he's done incredibly well. He's got a low-key style. He's not someone that shouts. He's not someone that wants to be in the headlines or on the... Uh, on the first story of the, the sports news on the television every week. He's and let's very not forget calm and as, relaxed, as well. The, the, thank you. But the <laughs> <laughs> calm and relaxed, also in a period of COVID. But let's not forget how difficult that was, that 21 campaign there, where it was difficult at times. Uh, 
there was unavailability. For everybody, for the, for well, the planet, but particularly... For everybody, but to, to still maintain that consistency, it's not an easy thing to have done. So he's faced uh, tough moments, as every manager does with their squad, but he seems to have always found a way to rally the group, bring them back together, integrate new signings, which I've said every week so far this season, because we know how many new names have come in. And so far, very, very good. And those uh, numbers reflect the quality of Mr. Pioli. It's Pioli's birthday on uh, 20th of October. There so wow. happy birthday to our happy coach. Birthday. Have, have, have we got him a gift? The Giroud. <laughs> the Giroud. Yeah. I, I think he's got quite a few Milan shirts. <laughs> the win against Juventus. Maybe, so. maybe us exactly, three. Exactly. Maybe, very good. Three, three points. Three points. Very good. Brava. <laughs> Now, um, let's talk about uh, uh, the Rossoneri with their in, in the international break with their national mm. team who made the difference. Uh, we are looking at the results, players in action, 13. A good number. Manian, yes. Theo, Kier, Reinders all playing mm. 118 minutes there. Pulisic, if you would have seen yeah. some uh, more goals, more quality, always, always performance for his national team. Some obviously depends. Obviously, um, you can see there Giroud, Chao, Tomori, Chukwueze not playing as many minutes as some, but on the road with their national teams, I, I always think it's, um, what's the correct word? Interesting, perhaps a little dangerous after players come back from an international break. It can always take a match day sometimes to get back into, into the swing of things. But look, I think uh, these players at this time of season, it's still early in the campaign. I think they're sharp and I think mm. they'll be uh, fit and firing and motivated, of course, for the task. And also, it, I think it improves players. I mean, Malik Chow mm. is starting to make his way in the Germany side mm. now, which is very good you know, for him, his development. Mm. Um, Fikayo Tomori played for England in the victory against Australia. <laughs> sorry, Adriano. It's OK. Not sorry. Uh, so it's really good and it's a sign <laughs> The 13 players from this squad travelled to play for their for national sure. team. It's a sign that the squad is an important squad. You know, it's a team, it's a group with players that are starting to make an impact. Reinders, Tijani mm. Reinders, mm. is starting to grow into a, um, a starting role, let's say, an influential role in the midfield for the Netherlands. So it means that someone, it means that you're doing things well and the players are performing well. They're being noticed by their um, international managers. So it's great for Milan and great for them. Keeping uh, talking about uh, Europe, uh, our coach uh, will reach uh, 200 uh, appearances uh, with uh, Paris Saint-Germain in the match against uh, Paris Saint-Germain on Wednesday night. A very important appointment uh, in, uh, in, against Paris Saint-Germain, uh, what we should expect. Well, PSG have struggled somewhat this season. They're trying to uh, bed in a new style of play with uh, Luis Enrique, their, their Spanish coach. Mm -hmm. They've lost some important players in the summer, we know about that. Neymar, Lionel Messi, Sergio Ramos. But they're still PSG, they're still dangerous, they've still got some stars. They've got a French guy called Kylian Mbappé, I think we've all heard of him. So it will be a real test for uh, Mr Pioli's, as we say every week, new or newish look Milan. This is going to be an incredible match. I'll be there, cannot wait to be there. It's going to be tough because, of course, two teams coming in off the back of results they will be disappointed by. Milan with the, the draw against Dortmund, where there was the opportunity to, of course, win. I think still the draw, I'm comfortable with the draw, but now a lot of pressure on this double header home and away against Paris Saint-Germain. And Paris Saint-Germain, of course, with that heavy loss at Newcastle that I don't think any, well, you said you predicted it, but I don't think too many people did you? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Okay, yes. You I predict predicted it perfectly. But look, I think now there's a bo pressure on both. This is the group of death. We always discuss it. Milan defensively have been very strong, but we know PSG's strength is their attack. So you've mentioned Kylian Mbappe, but they've also brought in Gonzalo Ramos. They've got Dembele, Colomuani. So there's going to be some pressure on, on the Milan defence to continue what we've seen in Europe. I'm confident they can, but obviously what needs to Change is the other way. We need to see goals from, from Milan this time out because so far ha haven't scored in the two games, but this is going to be a really exciting match day, match day three. The first goal of this new Champions League. It's still <laughs> awaiting that first goal. And of course now away and at home. But look, they just conceded four goals against Newcastle on match day two. So the, the opportunities are there. I think their strength is definitely their attack defensively. They, new faces across the park, but it's going to be a wonderful atmosphere, a very intense atmosphere at the Parc des Princes, but, uh, an opportunity for, for Milan and really the focus needs to be to get a result at least and hopefully more. That's all for uh, Stefano Pioli's side, let's move on with our women.
our uh, rossoneri with many fixtures uh, who are uh, off uh, the back uh, of the goalless draw against uh, Como. Sheridan. Yes, it was a combative match. Mm? They worked hard. Uh, Mr. Gans' side worked hard, gave everything, but they couldn't hit the back of the net. Similar to some of the men's performances in the Champions League where they just couldn't quite get the final touch and uh, score. Uh, a frustrating match for the Rossonere against Como, um, a type of derby as well, because Como is very near. Um, not much more you can say, really. It's uh, need to get back on the goal trail soon. Clean sheet was uh, was useful. Clean sheet was important, mm. but it wasn't. Um, it was another match that was just. I mean, that was the closest. That was uh, Marta Mascarello with a fabulous free kick <coughs> that uh, came off the underside of the bar, and uh, Milan deserved to win. That's the first thing to say. Milan deserved the victory, but it didn't arrive. Como were disciplined. Como were very conservative in their style. Um, there was, there was a, uh, there was a, the, the free kick early we saw was probably the best moment of the, of the match in terms of uh, Milan's um, chances. Uh, Como sat back, didn't really throw many players forward. Um, the fans got behind their team, the home side, so Como had the fans on their side. Um, and you can see as the match wore on, set pieces were the most likely opportunity for Milan to make the breakthrough, but. Alas, it didn't happen, and on to the next match. Not too many highlights to remember from that match, but I no. did hear the commentary was very good in that match. I would love to get your commentary and listen to it in, in future there, Sheridan. He does a wonderful work commentating Thank the you. women's matches. Thank You're welcome. you very much. But uh, look, you see the table, mm? four points, four matches. Obviously doesn't look good at this point, but let's not forget two defeats against Juve and Roma, who were unbeaten there at the top. And they, were, they performed quite well. Remember a narrow defeat right at the end against Juventus, against Roma, let, were in, in the lead and then obviously Roma with four goals and, and came back and won 4-2. But I think the signs are there. Now with an easier stretch to come, I think that there are plenty of points up for grabs and a lot of confidence. Another international break coming as well. A lot of the girls will be away, but this is a, it's, it's been a solid start, a good clean sheet, but hopefully three points to come this weekend. Now, Rossonere are in action also on Sunday for the match against Pomigliano. What we should expect about this face-to-face? -face? What do you think? Pomigliano are a difficult team to play. Uh, it's at home, it's at the, the Puma House of Football, so that's an advantage. But Pomigliano, they, they make life difficult for you. Um, I think they're one of those teams that with all due respect, you'd never expect them to, to win uh, the women's Serie A, but they do get a lot of points by being difficult to play against, being clever, streetwise, furbo, if you prefer the Italian. They're a tough opponent and you can measure your progress against them. If, if you can get a victory against them, it's worth more than, than it looks on the page because they're not a glamorous team, we know that. They're not a Champions League regular, Women's Champions League regular, but they make life really hard for you. So it's an important match and it will be, if, if Milan can get the victory, it will be well earned because they're, they're awkward. Heavy defeat last weekend for Pomigliano against Fiorentina, but again, they, they did push, I think it was the opening round, they did push Juventus 2-3, was at Pomigliano, Juventus won late on. So it's a team that has had some solid performances against some of the stronger teams. But Milan need to be winning this match. In terms of the, the race for, well, the title, the race for, for the top places to get back to the Women's Champions League next season, at home, this is a match that's a must win for, for Gunza's team. So, improved performances to come, but a vital three points up for grabs. So, good luck to our Rossonere for Sunday match. And now, let's focus on our under-19s. A great period, a great uh, first half of the new season for Abate's side. The result, the last one against Atalanta 3-1, uh, which confirmed uh, the seating at top of the table for our little uh, Rossoneri. That's looking very good, Sheridan. Very, very good. We remember last season it was a different start to the campaign, but 16 points, great. top of the table, off the back of the success in Europe last season, started well in Europe this season. What's changed? Obviously, some, some newer players have, have come through, but uh, Mr. Rabat has really got them playing at their very highest level. Yeah, I think they've had another summer working with Mr. Abate, understanding his ideas. 
Uh, the attack is particularly uh, sharp. That's Atalanta's uh, opening goal, by the way. And uh, it, it was a tough match to come back. Uh, that was, uh, that's Victor scoring another outside the area goal, Adriano. It's Very become nice. his speciality. Eye of a needle, the gap to squeeze that in was narrow and he found Great it. Great finish. Um, and another set piece goal as well. Super Kevin Zeroli. Uh, he's been captain fantastic this season. We mention his name every week. And, we, and he deserves it, Adriano. He deserves it, Leicher, because he's such a good player. He leads by example. And um, the team are playing with such confidence. And look at that. Wonderful. And you know what, guys? He practices that in training, Kevin Zidori. There's some, there's some footage of him doing that in a training match. So that was not a coincidence. That was not a fluke. Kevin Zidori leading by example, the captain. And the team are just playing with such freedom such joy and the defence is relatively watertight so it's a really exciting time for the young Rossoneri. Looking ahead to the weekend, the next face-to-face -to -face against Roma, your thoughts about the game? To just keep going I would say. I would say the team have to uh, try and uh, they're on the crest of a wave to mm. use a surfing analogy and uh, <laughs> I think that they just have to keep going because they're playing with freedom the wingers, and there are there are four wingers if you include the reserves or the substitutes, uh, Scotty, Sia, Ugo Cuenca, and, um, and other players who can come in and make a difference, the striker, Camarda. The attack is just, it, there's, it's a really rich group of players who can come in and score a goal, make something happen. Kevin Zodoli from midfield, Giancarlo Simic pops up with goals from centre-back. It's just really exciting, and I say it every week, and, and I'll say it again, if you have a chance to watch the Milan youth team, uh, check them out, because they're, they're a joy to behold. And now, about the double uh, game uh, for uh, our Rossoneri under 19s, not only Primavera 1, but also Youth League, in which uh, they are doing very well, something that is uh, reflected in the results uh, after Newcastle, after Borussia Dortmund, now the game against Paris Saint-Germain on Wednesday. A win here, nine points, Sheridan. It's been a, a strong start, of course. The win, obviously playing as the men do, but the win against Newcastle on the opening day, a win in Dortmund, match day two. And with other results going their way, nine points could effectively mean progression at this early stage. So, again, so impressive by Mr. Abate, not only domestically top of the table, but then playing against these big, big clubs mm. in Europe as well and getting results has been super impressive. Yeah, he's been so impressive this season, Mr. Barter, in the sunshine there. The sunshine a long time ago now. <laughs> winter has arrived. But no, it's uh, certainly not winter for the Primavera. It's been a really good start in Europe as well. And uh, nine points. Let's, let's all stay calm, as they say. But uh, a good result, even a draw mm. against uh, PSG would take uh, Milan to seven points at a halfway stage and you'd sign up for that straight away. And, um, you know, th this team, they, they, they are flying and who's to say they can't uh, cause um, some, uh, or, or get some eye-catching result against the French side. It's, it's highly possible. That's all for today. Thank you guys as always. Thanks to Adriano Del Monte. Thank you, Leach. Always a pleasure. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Thanks to Sheridan Bird. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, be looking forward to seeing everyone again soon. See you next week. Dear Rossoneri, thanks for following us and see you in the next episode of our AC Milan talk. Ciao!